Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video unboxing and first impressions of the Intel T11B convertible Windows tablet. This isn't exactly new to the market, it came out about two years ago, and you can see that by the Windows 8.1 logo at the very bottom of the box, but it's almost like a lost gem because if you search it online, there's very few content and reviews about it, despite the fact that it has almost a proprietary uh, chipset and a very non-standard configuration for a low-cost Windows tablet, which we typically see running on, let's say, a Baytrail quad-core chipset, probably running on Intel Atom since it's going to be low-cost. This one sells for you know under $300, and instead it uses an Intel Celeron chip clocked at 2 gigahertz. And instead of 2 gigs of RAM, which is typical for really low-end hardware, it comes with 4 gigs of RAM. There's also a full-size USB 3.0 port and a slightly larger than average 11.7 six inch IPS display. So on paper for this money, you really are getting a lot, uh, but there's not too much I could find, which is why I wanted to get a closer hands-on and review for you guys. So you can see it also includes, it looks like a one year subscription to McPhee out of the box. And although it says Windows 8.1, one reason why this cost is so low is there's actually no operating system installed. It's been optimized for Windows 8 and Windows 10, but there's no OS included, which is a huge exception to almost every single other tablet you get now. So it almost seems like a hobbyist grade hacker geek uh, based uh, or oriented tablet a computer more than something that's consumer oriented, which again, just made me want to pick it up and take a closer look even more. So let's take a look at the back here. We can see some basic info and advertising. There's Wi-Fi, BGN, there's Bluetooth, of course. It supports 64-bit software and the keyboard here also isn't included out of the box, but you can pick one up for $15 and it includes a little trackpad as well. It's very reminiscent and designed to the Microsoft Surface. Also has a metal kickstand, which I'll show you later on. And again, there's some basic serial numbers. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. It's a pretty large packaging, so we'll find out if there's going to be some extras here. So opening it up, there is this compartment right on top, which kind of rattles inside. Let's see what you have. Looks like there's another smaller compartment. And in here we have what looks like a driver uh, DVD. So you can install this for Windows 8 and Windows 10 in case there's going to be missing drivers for let's say wireless graphic cards and stuff like that. There's also the aforementioned Antivirus Plus which is a one-year subscription that you get as a bonus package and there's also a information guide for the T11B printed in various languages. There's also documentation for the various ports and quick start. It, it uses this five contact pins and magnets to stick onto the back. You can see it uses a proprietary charging port as well, as opposed to a standard micro USB or a USB Type-C. So that's a little bit of a downside, but we'll take a closer look in a moment. Here is the tablet. And we can see that there is a screen protector that's uh, built right on in. We'll just leave that here for the moment. But again, uh, the first thing I notice is that the bezels are kind of large, but at the same time, it feels more like a 13 inch device in the hand, but it's well made. Originally, I thought that this would be coated in soft touch rubber or something like that, but it's actually made out of a matte plastic material. It's a polycarbonate frame, a little bit reminiscent of some Nokia phones and tablets. It feels quite solid and substantial in terms of build. We'll take a closer look in a moment. Down below here we have what looks like the charging brick. So it's actually using a standard laptop style charger, which uh, I guess makes sense since it's a hobbyist great uh, computer. Some folks will install Ubuntu or Linux and maybe not even Windows. So they probably want something a little bit more in terms of the um, current than just a standard US micro USB cable. There's also the looks like the US plug that you can insert onto the other side of the brick. And there's also, it looks like, removable adapters for global travelers. So if you live in the UK, there's that European adapter. And then there's another adapter here. So it's swappable, which is pretty nice. And you get all of these as part of the package deal. And that's it. There's no other headphones um, in, in terms of the packaging. So let's take a closer look at the design of the tablet next. We can see that we have this 
Intel branding on the back, and that's basically it. There's a film protector for the rear-facing 5-megapixel autofocus-enabled camera with LED flash, and there's also this kickstand made out of magnesium, which you can pop open with a satisfying click to pop it up at an angle. Again, very reminiscent of a surface, but it doesn't have quite as large of an area. This is pretty good. I always like kickstands built onto devices since I don't have to bring my own and I can use it to watch videos, game, and do productivity better, but it's not ideal for lab typing still. Um, it's not as good as a laptop if you are constantly working on your labs. There's some basic serial number printed, it looks like on the very bottom below the flap here, including the model and some power input. And there's also the aforementioned contact pens for future accessories. And there's also stereo speakers located on the back. So it's not front blasting, but on the edge here, you can see it's a pretty slim tablet. There's access to a micro SD card slot. There's a mini HDMI port for connecting to an external monitor and a full size USB 3.0 port, which is rare to find these days. No USB type C since this device is slightly older, but uh, you can see that it allows you to plug in thumb drives and hard drives with ease. It seems to have a little bit of power. I tapped that by uh, accident a few seconds ago, and there's just a power on off switch in addition, on the other side, there's access to a 3.5mm headphone jack for listening to music, volume rockers, which are very tactile and responsive, and a lock mechanism, which you can use to disable the orientation um, of the accelerometer also switching. And of course, there's a proprietary charging port on the very bottom here. So that's essentially it. The build, again, despite being made out of plastic, feels actually quite good. It feels very substantial, and it's not overly hefty but it feels like it's not gonna creak or cringe and it's easy to grip with your hands without touching the actual display. There's also a capacitive key on the very bottom, very typical for Windows tablets that takes you into the Windows home screen or lock screen. And of course there is a two megapixel front facing webcam with a uh, LED notification light and stereo microphones for noise cancellation when you are in a Skype or video call. So that's basically it and um, what I would expect is if you power this on for the first time, it's just going to take you to the BIOS and just say T11B, you know, the hard drive 64 gigabytes um, of built-in storage is empty and you have to install your own OS. And uh, to install it, you have to maybe connect a keyboard and press the escape key to set the BIOS to boot by USB. And afterwards, you can just install your operating system of choice. It's not that difficult, I would say. Um, you would need to probably create a bootable USB by installing a version of Windows, downloading it from Microsoft or from the web or, or Ubuntu or connecting an external DVD or CD drive, load it up, and then probably an hour and a half later, you'll be ready to go. But of course, one of the downsides is you have to use your own product key since it doesn't come with one. So it's definitely not ready to go out of the box, and that's why it's not a consumer-oriented uh, tablet. Uh, but since they didn't have to spend extra cash on loading the OS, they spent the money instead on a better hardware in terms of the build, the kickstand, four gigs of memory as opposed to the standard two, and a faster processor, which I think is really compelling, uh, especially for people who want to maybe play around with their computers a little more and have a slightly more time and patience to work with it. So we're going to install the operating system. I'm probably going to install Windows 10, get the drivers on here, and then come back with a more comprehensive review of how I think it performs and runs. So be sure to stay tuned for our full review coming out soon. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been our video unboxing of the T11B 11.6-inch Intel Windows tablet.